Presenting the Ricoh GR21. This camera here is a bit of a legend. I have been putting off doing a video for this one for a while as I didn't know where to shoot with it. That is until an opportunity to visit the wonderful city of Kyoto presented itself and I thought it would be a great way to put the camera through its paces. But more on that later. This is the famous Ricoh GR21. The first compact camera with a 21mm wide angle lens. And what a lens it is too. Ricoh spent a lot of time and money putting this lens into this camera. And it was so good, in fact, that they ended up making LTM versions of this and the 28mm lenses to be used on Leica cameras. When Ricoh released the GR1 cameras back in 1996, they surely had no idea that they would go on to be one of the most popular and coveted of compact cameras in history. And it goes for good reason because they were so coveted because of the fantastic design. Ricoh continually improved on this and improved the features on the cameras through the GR1S and the GR21 and the GR1V. And, but there was one thing that they didn't have to improve on and that was the compact design of the body. They nailed it first time. There was no improvements to be made on that and in fact it was so good and so compact that it inspired the future line of the Ricoh GR digital cameras. But they also got a massive PR boost thanks to the camera's most famous user, Moriyama Daido, who shot many of his iconic pieces on the GR1 and GR21 cameras. So much so that many people I have met have had their cameras signed by Moriyama-san. But the Ricoh GR series is a tragic tale which is all too common from compact cameras of this era. Their lifespan was not that long. They came just before digital really started to make a difference and so by 2004 they were discontinued with the last of the line being the GR1B and Rico moved on into focusing on their digital line and it was the end for the GR1 film cameras. The GR21's main selling point is the lens and it is really special. A 21mm 3.5 lens with aspherical elements to ease aberration due to the wide nature of the lens. The lens is sharp and very well balanced. This camera is really a street photographer's wet dream. The camera has all of the features you would expect from a premium compact camera. There are multiple shooting modes that you can cycle through, there is ISO selection, there is f-stop selection, exposure compensation, self-timer, and this one even has a PC sync cable on the back for a flash. So, and, and it's got a date imprint function which is still working. There is an awful lot packed into this tiny package but it's uh, as they say not about the size of the package but what you do with it that counts. One interesting point to note is that when you load the film it auto winds all of the film out of the roll and you effectively shoot backwards which I recall would really throw me off when sleeving negatives because everything is upside down. So let's take this little ripper of a camera out for a spin and to do that, we are going to hop onto the Shinkansen and head down to Kyoto to see the Kyotography show and meet our good friend Sean Lotman, who is going to guide us around Kyoto and is also a fantastic photographer in his own right. So let's go and put this little beauty through its paces.
this one. This is great. Uh, yeah. Look up exposure. Uh, Normally I don't shoot something this wide. Um, this is a 21 millimeter, as we've mentioned. Uh, so it is quite wide, but it was very popular with street photographers back in the day. I know when I was a young, precocious street photographer, um, I did shoot the GR21. I also shot the GR1V and the GR1S, which I really enjoyed. I found them more suited to me. I'm generally not really an in your face kind of person. And with a lens this wide, you can really get close. I don't really consider that to be intimate, more intrusive. But this lens isn't just for that. This camera isn't just for that either. It can be used for a variety of situations, cityscapes, landscapes. You can make the lens work for you if you've got the right eye to look for what you want. It's a great camera to use. It supposedly only 4,000 of these were made as well. So it feels like a bit of an honor to be able to shoot one of these. So you know the Ricoh GR1 yes it's a legendary camera but the GR series all of them um, and the GR21 is no exception it's small it's light it's very easy to use it's pocketable and it has all of the functions you might want exactly what you might want from a compact camera it is a true compact camera and Ricoh really knew they were onto something when they released this camera as, as you can see throughout the lineage, throughout the history, even right up to the latest digital GRs now, they still hold the same design, they still hold the same philosophy. So uh, Rico were really onto something good there. I say, yeah, Rico GR, Rick GR21, absolutely fantastic camera. If you can get your hands on one, give one a go. If not, try the GR1S, the GR1V, the GR1. You really won't be disappointed. They are so much fun. Okay, buckle up buttercups, it's that time again, it's pros and cons time. So, let's go, pros. Very small, easy to use, discreet, fantastic lens on it. Cons, getting kind of hard to find now, very hard to repair, and unfortunately, as with everything, they are getting pricey. That's it, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you liked it. Please like, subscribe, grab a t-shirt, go hit the website, be cool to one another, and keep on shooting film. See you next time, thanks.